In this video, I'm going to show you how to replace um, a V70 rear suspension from Nivomat system self leveling to a uh, normal system with normal shocks and springs. These are worn, as you can see, after uh, almost uh, 690,000 kilometers. So they have performed pretty well. As you can see, for the conversion from Niva Mat to a normal rear suspension, I've received the following parts. These are the springs, sucks. These are heavier duty than the Niva Mat springs. Of course, with uh, some new bolts and nuts. A set of shocks, also sucks, with some mounting bolts and nuts. Then the uh, spring seats, they belong to the normal uh, shocks. The Nivo Mat version is a bit different. Although they still look fine, they're different, so they should not be used with the normal shocks. Then here we have the, uh, the, the shock absorbers for the end stops and also with new mounting material. And this is from Fabi. Alright, what's important before we start on this job it is to uh, deblock all the uh, outside bolts and threads. Of course, after like 20 years, they can be seized up. But maybe you're lucky. It looks like I'm lucky because uh, although it's quite a bit rust, quite a bit of rust on there, it doesn't seem to be uh, too bad. You need to spray D-block oil on on the underside of the car, of course, on these two bolts. One is here, and one you can see there. Then this bolt also has to come loose. For the shocks and for the spring, this one needs to come loose. And of course, repeat the process on the other side. A bit more difficult to reach, but still possible. Even harder to fill. This one and this one. All right, what are we going to replace? First, from the inside of the car, I'll show you later on. The spring seats. The spring seats for our Nivo mod system are different than for the uh, normal system. So they need to be replaced. Of course, we also replace the, the bolts. Of course, we replace the shock. Replace and the bolt and washer that come with the shock. This one looks... Uh, pretty nasty. We also replace the springs because with normal shocks are heavier duty springs and as you can see the bump stop is also uh, has also come loose it's completely worn so we also replace the bump stops. Before you can remove these uh, spring seats you also have to remove uh, some of the parts in the trunk. Um, you can just uh, pull most of it out. However, this uh, the part that lays over here is screwed in with uh, two bolts. These very easy to undo, and then you can just slide it out and uh, take it away. The D block and all is doing its job. Now we're at the spring seat. The best way to work on it is from the rear, the rear entry doors, just to fold down the, the rear seats. And there you are. Now I have uh, jacked up the car. 
I'm using a lift, but uh, it's also possible to do it without a lift. This is a bit more convenient. Check it up. Place some uh, check stands under there and make sure the wheel is spinning freely. So the, the springs are fully uh, in the outer position, fully expanded. Now we can start removing the bolts of the seat spring, shock spring, that's how you want to call it. Be very careful, these can be rusted into place and um, if they are like rusted quite solid, quite stuck, it, it's important that you un unbolt and then retighten, unbolt, retighten and use quite a lot of uh, D-block oil. That won't mind, okay? And number two. When in bolting uh, the spring seats, the wheels had to hang freely. Now when removing uh, this bolt from uh, the shock, they want uh, to be uh, a bit of uh, on-wheel pressure. You can achieve this of course by uh, lowering the car. Or uh, what I do, I'll be uh, checking the arm a bit up. So the pressure is released. Although I don't think there's a lot of pressure still left in these uh, Niveau Mat shocks. Now you can uh, unbolt this nut. I just gave it a good whack yesterday, so I know it's not too stuck anymore. But also with this one, you need to be a bit careful. A big back and forth with uh, some uh, D-block oil. And managed to unbolt the nut and the washer. Well, that looks quite crusty inside. And boat shocks are now undone. The shocks are now completely loose. Just hanging on the spring seat. Manual says, Volvo manual says, you can just uh, pull them out, go to a bench and dismantle the niveau mats from the spring seats. However, uh, I had this before, uh, the hole is not big enough to let the bulky uh, niveau mat shocks uh, through. So you have to uh, unmount it here. Or just cut it off or whatever you do but you have to unscrew this bolt from the shock to get it uh, all removed on this one I'll be cheating using the impact gun The uh, sex shock 
come standard with this nut on top of it which uh, should be fine however when mounting it like this as it's on the drawing the uh, distance you can see it here is quite some distance between the last thread and the bottom and this uh, piece is not thick enough to fill up the gap so when you screw the bolt or the nut down it will not bottom out and when it starts uh, yeah, reaching the end of the thread, of the thread it, um, it is not catch and it's still wobbly on top it's not stuck so what I did I uh, bought some uh, some of these rings to fill it up so I put this one in here and now the spacer makes it just perfect to uh, to bolt it really good down this is the size I bought smaller is also fine but it has to be at least M10 This is a 17 mil, and this is just a wrench that can be resized. Don't know the English name of it. Volvo spec is 40 years. Now it's nice and tight. And now the struts are complete. They can be mounted uh, back into the car again. Just clean this a little bit. This is impossible to do with the Evo mats because they are too thick. And now it's time to unbolt this one to remove the uh, spring.
can only be seated in one way because of this locating pin. And this is how it is located. See, this is how the spring lies into the lower mount of the control arm. Now let's see if we can remove the spring and uh, everything that's inside. There we go. And there's the top as well. Let's see how crusty it is. Let's dismantle this one. As you can see, the new one is a bit shorter and it's much thicker. The windings are much thicker because the normal shock absorber is not as strong as the Nivomad shock absorber. It's now the spring, only the spring that needs to carry the weight. But because it's shorter, it might be an easier install. Now we have to get this disassembled and assembled. Let's see if we can get the old one out. This is going to be hard. It's a push pin like this, which spreads the Spread this outwards, but on this one it's still in there. Well, well, I might break it. Why not? But this one, this has to come out. Let's see how we manage.
is the easiest way. Just pushing it in. Yeah. Did quite a good job. It's already in. Yep. didn't go well. Well, that was quite a project there. Um, first, that was complete. It's nice. Uh, first, you need to uh, put this clip into the bump stop itself. You can do that. You can press it in through with a like a, a quite large 15 size it fits nice over here you can put it through through uh, through there put it through, through there and then put it on the, the black hat and then push it on there then I used this tool to sit on the pin, be very careful not to uh, to dislodge it and, and hit it straight down, and then it's uh, set. And now we have to mount it, mount it all back again. There we go. Now, what's left is uh, putting it back in the right direction. And uh, hope we'll get it in. Time to install. Take a new nut. This is how it's seated on the right hand side.
And now, new washer, new nut. We have to talk that this one up to 80 Newton. That's what we're going to do. Eighty newton, and these need twenty-five newton. And the job is done. Two new shocks and springs.